Happy Friday! Today we're talking about talent trends, how generative AI is shaping businesses and society, and also the use of generative AI in enterprises. I am Johannes Sundlu, and this is indeed an experiment. I'm trying out a new form factor, doing updates like this on YouTube, and it's aimed for you who likes to follow along on what's happening in the space of AI and HR. This is a test. I don't know if this will succeed or not, but this is just a test to see if I'm able to do it and also if you like it or not. So please let me know in the comments what's working and what's not working, what could be improved, what you'd like to see, is there any nuances that I'm missing here as well. So make sure you drop a comment on what could be improved and let's get going. First out, we have this report from Oliver Wyman Forum, which was shared in Davos the other week. It's called How Generative AI is Transforming Businesses and Society. They surveyed 25,000 people on this study. That's quite a large data set that went into this. And what I find most interesting is, of course, the parts that relates to, to how the workforce is perceiving generative AI. I find this interesting. More than 50% of employees say they use generative AI weekly at work. I find that to be a staggering number, especially given that if you think back a year, most people didn't even know what generative AI was. In a year, we have more than 50% of the workforce saying that they use generative AI weekly at work. And obviously, this is also an interesting fact. 96%, almost everyone, says that generative AI can benefit their jobs. So clearly, employees also see the benefit of using generative AI in their jobs. So once again, a staggering number, everyone. These two numbers are also interesting. 60% of white collar workers say they fear their roles will become redundant or automated. And at the same time, 57% of employees reported they are currently receiving insufficient AI training from their employer. On the one hand, you fear of losing out and then you also don't receive proper training from your employer, which once again will create some kind of worry, right, in our organizations. And we need to mitigate that gap in my view. And it's worth stopping here for a while. Because I think that this is a very important factor to consider, that we have employees in our organization, most likely, who feel that they are not getting the proper training in AI that they require. We have a huge obligation, in my view, from HR side, to provide this training to them. Make sure you think about how can you support your employees in this transformation. If you believe, like I do, and like this report shows as well, that this is something that will have an impact on our employees or already is having an impact on our employees, how are you helping them in this transition? The back to the report. They also believe that we will see a 40% increase in labor productivity by 2035 across developed countries. If you've been listening to the webinars I've been hosting, I talk about 10% productivity gains or 10% efficiency gains from generative AI. And they are assuming 40%, which is then, once again, if you anticipate 10%, that's not an aggregation in any way or shape or form. I strongly suggest that you go in and look at all of these numbers and all of the report because it's an interesting report. And as you can see here, this is how adoption at work is spreading throughout the world. And green represents weekly, black represents daily. And as you can see, there's quite a difference between all of these countries. And I know you have to take reports for what they are. It's one single report, but what I appreciate with this report is that it's a large data set. It's 25,000 people answering these questions. They have a large cohort of data going into this. Google is showing off Lumiere, which is a new video diffusion model that they've been working on. It's text to video or image to video. As you can see, I'm piggybacking on their demo here on Twitter. And I think this is really of the, one of the hot trends for 2024. We saw text to image being the thing in 2023. I believe text to video will be the big thing in 2024. And one might ask, why are we talking about this in a HR to AI video? I, I believe that it will impact parts of HR as well. For example, L&D, if you can generate videos for your trainings, for example, if you have quick trainings that you need to roll out the organization and all of a sudden you can take your transcript or your text that you're reading or that you're showing to people and then you can generate images that matches that. Imagine the possibilities of training as well, making dynamic video trainings, for example. I believe that this will impact us one way or another, perhaps not this year, but later down the line at least. And speaking of the future, 
Samsung released their Galaxy S4 Ultra the other week, and it has one amazing AI feature, which I also think will be something that we will talk about a lot in the upcoming year, and that is real-time translations. So basically, you can in real time translate from one language to another while calling each other. Let's take a listen. This is a result of entire team's hard work. Galaxy AI에 대한 사람들의 생각이 기대되네요. I'm looking forward to people's thoughts on Galaxy AI. I heard some say it's like magic. 답을 갖다고 들었어요. One might think now that this is something that will happen in the future. That this is a software update they will push and then you will get the capabilities. But that couldn't be further from the truth. I've seen a number of YouTubers trying this very function with their actual phones. So this is happening now. This is a capability that Samsung has as of today. It's happening now, now, now. And I'm betting my money on that we will see similar tools coming to Hangouts, Teams, Zoom, whatever it is that you use as a ways of communicating within your company you'll get live translations by the end of this year, which then again opens up possibilities, right? We can now speak our native tongue and have that translated automatically to the participants in a meeting. It's mind blowing if you think about it, but I'm pretty certain that we will have these capabilities this year. But now on to the next one. Mercer is about to drop their talent trends for 2024. They've already shown nudges of what's about to come. And even though I think that this is a list in alphabetic order, I still think that artificial intelligence will be top on this talent trends as well. You can pre-sign up for this, so make sure that you search for talent trends from Mercer and head over and sign up if you're very curious about what's to come from Mercer. What's interesting with this as well is that it's a large cohort of C-suite executives and a large cohort of HR leaders. So we will get good insights to what those two groups are thinking about all of this. This is a slightly older article from December last year, but still relevant in my opinion. AI in 2024, monitoring new regulation and staying in compliance with existing laws. It's quite a long article, but it's a good one. The key points here for us in HR is in regards to the EU's AI Act that if you've been listening to me before, I've talked about before and I wrote about before as well. And it's coming and it will impact nearly all industries. This stands out for me. The use of AI in employment decision will be circumscribed by employment related laws. I think that is important to take into account if you're buying products that uses AI one way or another. Are they compliant? Are they taking decision in regards to employment and are they compliant? I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy AI system because there might be regulations coming later down the line. I'm just saying that do your due diligence when buying these systems. Ask the question to the vendor, how are you making sure that your product is compliant with upcoming regulation? And one final survey before we close this off for today. It's from Deloitte with the title Now Decides Next. Insights from the leading edge of generative AI adoption. And they surveyed mainly C-suite and HR leaders, 2,800 of them. And let's dive into the ins and outs of this report as well. And this is the first slide I want to talk about. It says, when is generative AI likely to transform your organization? And what I think stands out for me here is that a mere 1% says never. Only 1% of the people in this survey believe that AI will never impact their organization. And if we look closer, most people believe that AI will impact their organization in less than three years. So only 20% says beyond three years. The largest cohort, 48%, is, is to be found in one to three years. But if we sum that up, I think that we can rest assured that AI will for sure impact us. And not surprisingly, what the organizations hope to achieve with generative AI is to improve efficiency and productivity and reduce cost. And once again, this is why I believe that we in HR have a huge role to play here. Because it's easy now to see the efficiency gains and act accordingly. But we need to think hard and thoroughly about the organizations we're now building and how we structure them. Is this the right thing to do? That's the question you should be asking yourself all the time. Also an interesting key finding that I will mention here, 91% of all organizations expect their productivity to increase due to generative AI which is similar numbers that we saw in the first report that we talked about. 
I feel confident saying that yes, productivity will increase if you find ways of using generative AI in a good and positive way. The problem here is obviously how do we make sure that people are using generative AI in our organizations and do that in a fashionable way as well. And I might be preaching for the choir here. But if you look at the bottom bar here, that is talent. It clearly shows that our organizations are not prepared for handling AI at the moment. Thus, we need in HR prepare our organization on how to handle AI within our organizations. And that is a task that I think we should take seriously. So how do we make sure that people have the right tooling and the right education in order to utilize AI to its full potential? That is a task that I think falls on us in HR. And we have work to do here. We need to increase the green space on this slide. And I'd love to see that next year, that more organizations are highly prepared or very highly prepared. And I also love the fact that generative AI is impacting talent strategies now. This is not something that is far-fetched in the future. This is happening here and now. As you can see here, it's also a very short time frame, one to two years, where people expect to make changes to their talent st strategies because of generative AI. Hence, in order to be future-proof, you need to start to think about this today and articulate some kind of strategy in order for your organization to stay compliant and to stay ahead of the game. That was it. Make sure you hit the like button if you liked this video and if you found it useful. And also make sure to comment on this as well. I need your input in all of this. Was this good? What could be improved? Is it helpful? Was it too light? Was it too deep? What could be improved? Please let me know in the comments and hit the subscribe button as well. And I'll see you, I'll see you next week.